Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. My name is Lucas. Now, as most of you know, Figma is kind of the leading design tool out there, right? You can, you have this infinite canvas. A lot of people are using it to, you know, design web apps, to design mobile apps, to design websites. They use it in tandem with other tools like Framer, like Webflow, like WordPress, or, or even um, together with developers, right? With big developer teams. Small companies are using it, big companies are using it. And I started using Figma back in like 2018, 2019, before the whole COVID uh, pandemic. And I remember that it was completely free, right? You could use it, you can open different files, you can have a, like a bunch of different pages and different files. And this was like kind of like a game changer. If you're coming from this web design world and you were using before like Adobe XD or, or uh, Sketch, right? This new um, tool in the market, Figma, basically changed the game and it actually made everything so easy to, to learn for, for beginners like me back then. And it also you know, gave you the opportunity to, to really try the tool at its max. But anyway, still a bunch of people are lazy. You know, We don't wanna build designs from scratch. Inside of Figma, for example, you could open a specific frame and let's set, for example, a desktop frame like this. And then you can, for example, just start creating different things with like boxes like this. You can, let's imagine that this is like a text box. This is like a smaller paragraph over here, right? This one is like, like a call to action down here, like a button. And then basically this obviously doesn't look nice. So you have to kind of set up the spacing. And for beginners, this might be quite a lot of work to understand or they just, they understand the concept, but they don't really know why their design isn't looking nice. And so it's kind of natural to look at other designers and see what they're doing best, right? There's this famous quote by Picasso. I think it's like steel, like a, like an artist or something like that. So it's, it's, you know, natural to look at other people's work and kind of take little pieces from that and use it in your own design works. And basically Figma has a really nice place called the, you know, Figma community. You can go here and you can search for something like um, SAS landing page, right? And you see a bunch of work that has been made by other designers, right? You can just keep on scrolling and there's just a lot of different projects to be made. So this is kind of like one form of finding inspiration. And it's very cool because you can, you know, just click on something and then just open it in Figma and you get the landing page like this and you can basically just, you know, start copying things and putting them into your project, right? And and uh, obviously you, you, you'd make it in your own style, but you know, this is a good way of doing it. But still there's a lack of like personalization in terms of what you really want to design. Let's say that you have a really unique type of, of, of design style and you find this, it is, you know, like maybe 40% of what you want right? You want something like with a screen like this, but you don't want it to be so playful, like, like what it is right now. You want it to be a little bit more sophisticated in terms of the designs. Maybe you have some like screenshots of, of other designs that you find. Um, but this one in specific is, you know, 40% there, not really there, right? And that's kind of like the problem with Figma community when looking for designs, you don't really find the thing that you really want sometimes. And basically you can look at websites like Dribbble, to kind of see other types of inspiration. Maybe you can put like SAS landing page and you can say dark, right? And then you add those keywords and you get all these SAS landing pages that are dark. And some might be really cool. Like let's say this one you really, you really like, but you don't really get any type of Figma file that you can use. It's just like these screenshots and not really anything useful that you can actually build off of. And you can use tools like ChatGPT. They're getting better and better like these pure chat tools, um, as you can see, but it's still not really tailored towards design. It's not like a, you know, AI designer, but there are AI tools out there like magic path, like as you see right here, um, where you can basically just click on the plus sign. It opens a new section over here, a new component. You can type in what you want to build. And then basically, as you can see over here, we have our different generations. In this case, we want to build like some type of Yelp app. As you can see, this is like the home page. This is like the profile page over here. This is the, the search page. This is the bookmarks page. And you can continue designing in here. Like you can, for example, 
like edit a specific thing. Like let's say the search bar, we can make it, you know, dark mode if we wanted to, we don't really want to do that. But, you know, you could eventually like just select certain things here and we can create, you know, we can ask Magic Path to basically continue designing on this whole design. We can ask it to edit certain components. We can create flows. As you can see, these are different flows, basically meaning different steps of the, you know, whole UX process or the whole user journey, I would say. Creating uh, variants, which um, I could show you over here how that kind of looks like, right? This is kind of like the first variant that it created. And then it creates three extra variants for you to kind of see. So what I'm trying to say is that this tool is like an excellent tool to kind of get you started with designing. Let's say you have a specific app idea or you have a specific, you know, vision for your website. You can basically just go into Magic Path. You know, you can start writing something what you want and start generating it. And then basically once you want to bring this into Figma, you can go ahead and open this open a new tab button over here. You can just click on it, go into your new tab and you can basically see the app that you've built right right now it's in the desktop view because i'm on my desktop but basically what you can do is you can just copy this url and then and then inside of figma what you can just do is just paste this url click on the import and then basically it's going to show up just like this right we have our nice you know looking just exactly how it is um, created in magic path and maybe for example you have no idea of how to get started maybe you just have some types of inspirations of what you want to build, but you don't really, you can't, you're not maybe, you're probably not really a designer, but you work with a design team or you have a developer team that works with Figma as well. And you kind of want to just bring something into Figma really quickly. So in this case, we can say that we're in the trucking business, right? It needs to show my contact information, my four different types of pricing models, a paragraph about my story along with a picture of me, and maybe a few other suggestions, a few other sections you can suggest. What other sections do you suggest, right? So you can basically start a chat. You don't have to directly design. You can just start chatting and you can start adding some references, right? Now, I'll be very honest with you. It's very hard to find a good uh, website, uh, a nice looking website for a trucking company, but I'm just going to take this screenshot just for like the color scheme, right? So we can go back into Magic Path and basically just drag and drop this image in, in, in here and we can say um, I, I also like the color scheme of the image reference I added to this chat what do you think of the color scheme right just just you know different questions we can submit that and basically, you know, instantly we get um, the color scheme is modern, professional, uh, uh, very fitting for a trucking business. Great choice. I suggest adding sections for customer testimonials, a fleet gallery, and a simple quest requ uh, quote request form. So that's great. So before we design, can you confirm to me the color scheme we will be using just to kind of make sure? And absolutely, we'll be using bright sky blue, deep navy blue, and accents of orange yellow as seen in your reference. Okay, okay, perfect. I want white to be the primary color, and I want the footer to be navy blue, and I want the nav bar to be sky blue, right? So we can even give it like some specific instructions like that. So, you know, you're basically designing with words with, with the English language, right? So then we can say like any other suggestions. Okay, so it suggests using orange, yellow for call to action buttons and highlights and subtle navy blue text for a heading to make maintain a plea. So I, I could say, um, all right, let's do that. Let's, let's just do it. Let's Let's do it. Boom. And basically it's going to get, gather all of that context that we just spoke about in the chat and basically create a variant for us over here. And then we basically get a result like this, basically quite similar to what we prompted, right? But let's say that we want to make it a little bit more modern looking, a little bit more, you know, add some more, you know, 
cool animations or something. I think we have to like basically overall improve the design a little bit. I like the color scheme. I like this light blue with the dark navy blue. This is kind of what this client wanted, right? But we want to make it more modern looking, make it more um, award winning, but keep the color scheme, right? So what we can do is create variants and let's say, let's keep the color scheme, but let's make the design modern looking and award winning. Make it be beautiful, right? Perfect. And let's just submit this. And then we basically get three different variants, right? We can start at the very top, just zoom in here and kind of see it's quite the same style as this. So if we scroll back up, we get this with the image in the background, but this is kind of on the left blocking the truck. Here we have the, the text on the left and the truck is still there. You can actually see it. You can see that kind of like the logo of the truck as well. And you also see like the call to action very clear here. So you don't have to scroll down to get a quote. You can just do it here, you know, in the, in the hero section. If I just click on this, continue scrolling down, we get some nice uh, gradients on, on the person, right? This is basically the owner of the truck company. We have this nice little box over here that kind of represents the years of experience. Um, we have different um, values that this person has. And if I really zoom in here and if I hover over these boxes, you can see that we have like these little um, effects going on, right? And then we can just scroll down. You can see the different prices, right? The different, this is the most popular one with a you know, bright orange call to action. Also very nice, you know, hover effects. We have what our clients say, ready to ship with us right here, boom. And then at the very end, we get a very beautiful gradient, kind of navy blue type of gradient for our footer, right? So, and then we, we get the second one, a little bit more simple type of design, but we still get the color scheme here and there. And over here, we get this one as well with this kind of background blur nav bar, we get this um, button that takes you to the quote at the bottom. Um, we get our about section. So basically all of the sections are the same um, throughout all the three different variants, but we get just different types of designs. And this is a great way to kind of brainstorm on different types of designs that you would want for your company, right? And let's just say that in this case, we wanna use this one, right? So I would just go over here, open a new tab, and wait for that to load, that loads. And then once that finishes loading, we're just going to... And what I would wanna do here is I just wanna click on open a new tab, open that, wait for it to load. Basically just copy this, go into Figma, go back up here, plugins, right? HTML to design, wait for that to load up. Once that loads up, just copy everything, delete it paste in that URL, click on import, just wait like, you know, five to 10 seconds. And we basically get our entire design imported. You can also see that the gradients are there as well. All of, all of the different sections are there. And what we can do here is we can basically just edit certain things, right? So for example, this is like a, a gradient. We can just edit this to be a little bit different, right? We can uh, make sure that this is like all white or a little bit gray. And this is kind of like the power of Figma, right? That you can actually go into these different things. And, you know, if you're a designer, actually go into this, the design and fix everything, um, make and, and actually just finish the job. So yeah, guys, I hope you learned something new today. I hope you learn how to like easily boost up your design flow in Figma, right? If you're kind of stuck, if you want to have better types of ways to brainstorm, not only just bringing in like screenshots and stuff, but actually generate finished designs that are, you know, basically that you made with an AI. Try that magic path trick, you know, generate some stuff in magic path, bring that into Figma. I think with magic path, you get like five different generations a day. That's enough. That's enough to kind of create one design, chat with the AI about it and create different variants and then readjust those variants, right? So try it out today. Let me know if this, this actually works. And if you have any more video ideas of what we can do with, with Figma and design and, and Magic Path together, please let me know in the comments below. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Goodbye.